They say self-preservation is the strongest of human instincts. Though we work hard to avoid them, pain and fear serve as integral parts to the mechanism that motivates our will to live. This next story highlights the response one man had to pain and fear in the face of impending death, prompting us to ask ourselves, just how far would we go to survive? Would we go as far as, say, self-surgery? I'm Dre of the Dead, and it's time to feed your head. Leonid Rogozov was born in 1934 in a remote village in eastern Siberia. After graduating as a general practitioner, in 1959 he began training as a surgical specialist, but dropped out to join the 6th Soviet Antarctic Expedition as the only doctor on the team, a choice that would soon require him to do the unthinkable. On the morning of April 29, 1961, 27-year-old Rogozov began to experience weakness, nausea, fever, and pain in his lower left side. And though treatment was attempted, nothing improved his condition. The next day, his symptoms grew to include localized pain and swelling that worsened into the evening. In his diary, Rogozov wrote, I did not sleep at all last night. It hurts like the devil. A snowstorm whipping through my soul, wailing like a hundred jackals. The journey from Russia to the Antarctic took 36 days by sea, and the ship wasn't set to return for another year. With the nearest Soviet research station over a thousand miles away, and severe blizzard conditions preventing aircraft from coming to his aid, Rogozov realized that he had no other choice but to perform emergency surgery on himself. Still, no obvious symptoms of perforation is imminent, but an oppressive feeling of foreboding hangs over me. This is it. I have to think through the only possible way out, to operate on myself. It's almost impossible, but I can't just fold my arms and give up. He started by creating a plan of action for his assistants to follow in case he lost consciousness during the operation, which included an injection of adrenaline followed by manual artificial ventilation. What follows is a graphic description of events not for the medically squeamish. On May 1st at 2 a.m. local time, the operation began with help from an engineer and a meteorologist who provided medical instruments and mirrors to help Rogozov see from angles beyond his vantage point. Because general anesthesia was out of the question, Novocaine was applied locally. Rogozov, in a semi-reclined position, made a 10 to 12 centimeter incision into his own abdominal wall, accidentally cutting into his cecum, or beginning of the large intestine, and had to suture it closed. In his own words, Rogozov recanted, I worked without gloves. It was hard to see. The mirror helps, but it also hinders. After all, it's showing things backwards. I work mainly by touch. The bleeding is quite heavy, but I take my time. I try to work surely. Opening the peritoneum, I injured the blind gut and had to sew it up. Suddenly, it flashed through my mind. There are more injuries here and I didn't notice them. I grow weaker and weaker. My head starts to spin. As he reached the final and most difficult part of the operation, Rogozov began to lose consciousness and feared he wouldn't make it. Miraculously, he managed to remove the appendix, apply antibiotics to the area, and close the wound successfully. By 4am, 
the operation was complete. Before allowing himself to rest, he looked to his assistants, who he described as whiter than their surgical whites, and instructed them to wash all medical instruments used in the operation. Only after the room was clean did he finally take antibiotics and sleeping pills. After the operation, Rogosov's pain and swelling declined and his general condition improved. Five days in, his fever subsided and seven days in, his sutures were removed. In fact, it only took two weeks before he resumed his regular duties on the expedition. Though the men were due to return in April of 1962, thick ice and extreme weather conditions prevented the ship from reaching them, and it seemed the team would have to spend another year in Antarctica. More and more often, waves of dull homesickness and hatred of this cursed Antarctica wash over me. How odd it seems that I ever agreed to go on this expedition. All the exoticism of Antarctica was exhausted within a month, and in return I'm losing two years of my life. My clinic, which I love more than any worldly pleasure, seems as far from here as Mars. Luckily, the team was eventually airlifted back to Russia by single-engine planes. With one last dramatic close call, as one of the planes narrowly avoided dropping into the ocean. Word of Rogozov's self-surgery captivated the Soviet people. Though he mostly shunned the publicity, he was awarded with the Order of the Red Banner of Labor. The incident itself prompted a change in expedition policies, requiring all personnel to receive extensive health checks before deployment. Upon his return, Rogozov continued his work as a doctor for various hospitals in Leningrad and fathered a beautiful baby boy. From 1986 to his final days, he served as head of surgery for the St. Petersburg Research Institute and ultimately passed away in 2000 from lung cancer. He was 66 years old. If you enjoyed this strange but true tale, be sure to subscribe and check out previous episodes covering everything from live burial to spiritual possession. Also, be sure to visit my Redbubble shop, where I create shirts based on certain episodes, including this one. If you'd like to support the future of these videos, while also enjoying blooper reels and behind-the-scenes footage, consider joining my Patreon. These are the current patrons who make these videos possible. I can't thank you enough. And as always, to everyone watching, be well and stay strange.